Bienvenidos al primer panel del... Welcome to the first panel of the first Unicervitate Symposium Service Learning in Higher Education. We will start with our first panel, why we need a committed and caring higher education today. We will have different representatives of different educational institutions uh, engaged in service learning. The moderator will be Judith Pett, who is a teacher and a researcher at the Tangasa University College in Nairobi, Kenya. She is also the coordinator of the regional Unicervitate hub in Africa. Welcome, Judith. Thank you very much. This is a wonderful occasion. I'm very happy to be part of the launch of the Unicervitate program today. Indeed, the topic is so rich. All of us need to reflect on why we need committed and supportive higher education institutions. We will reflect on service learning in higher education. I would like to welcome you all to this amazing panel. I look forward to a rich exchange in order to come up with a sound collective reflection on this important topic that is so relevant for today's society. Let me start by introducing the first speaker of the day, Mr. Ignacio Sanchez Diaz. He is the rector of the Pontifical Catholic University of Chile. He has worked at the clinical hospital of the Catholic University as chief of the pediatric respiratory section and pediatric services. Since 2004, he has served as director of the School of Medicine. In 2008, he was elected dean of the School of Medicine. All right. So now, without further ado, I'm going to give the floor to Ignacio Sanchez Diaz so that he can start with his presentation. Welcome. Thank you, Judith. Thank you for the invitation. And I'm very happy to be here in this symposium on higher education with such an excellent uh, panel of experts around this table. I think that Unicervitate is an excellent example of service learning in Catholic uh, higher education. Our university is uh, leading the regional hub. And we are very happy to be part of this uh, symposium where we are going to focus on the service dimension and also on the spiritual dimension existing in Catholic universities today. During the 10 and 15 minutes we have, I would like to address in a more detailed manner what it means to have a truly committed, uh, service-oriented higher education in today's world. First, let me say that I will talk about committed higher education. It is obvious that there are two main pillars in higher education, comprehensive education of youth, education not just on different subjects, but also education in values, in citizenship, in democratic aspects, 
common good. One of the founders of our university 130 years ago said that higher education he aims at educating the hearts of youth in order to contribute to the common good of the country, the region, and society as a whole. And secondly, we need to generate new knowledge. And this has to happen in all fields of knowledge, in social sciences, in art, in hard sciences. So these two dimensions have to converge towards a public engagement and common good. So that is why it is so important to have a high level of commitment and the caring dimension. We need to educate uh, by doing. And obviously, theoretical education has to be supplemented with experiential learning because in that way we can have an unforgettable footprint on the learning of young people. When we have committed education from a Catholic university, we also see another element, and that is the mission of the university. The mission is related to the university's identity as a Catholic university, but also it has to do with other aspects, inclusion, the ability to bring together believers and non-believers to participate as a Catholic university in a pluralistic society where all voices are heard in establishing a, an open dialogue, including everyone. So our universities have to be part also of the public debate. It is ultimately in public debate where we can make a contribution. Our voice is important, and it needs to be brought together with other voices. All of us have the right to express ourselves. So our voice has to be generous, convincing, and prone to dialogue and to engagement with others uh, in to put to the service of public engagement and common good. So this is the aspects that I, these are the aspects that I can highlight on the commitment side. Then on the solidarity or service side, here we talk about relating to others, getting to know other realities. I think that in our countries, uh, we have the interest of listening to other voices, listening to other points of views. Sometimes uh, we spend too much time talking with peers who have had the same educational background, the same ideas. And I think that from a solidarity standpoint, we need to talk to those that are different from us in order to get to know different realities and also to be able to find value in diversity. Diverse universities are better. They are universities that move towards inclusivity. They are broader, more comprehensive, more encompassing, and of higher quality. So when we look for high quality, we want to give our university community and the youth that we educate that wide, very diverse view. So the, one of the pillars of solidarity-based education is the common good. And here, service learning comes into play. We 
find uh, real context with genuine needs of the population. We work on the field, getting to know the real needs of our population. We started doing service learning in our university in 2004, more than 16 years ago. And we started working in real contexts, addressing real needs. We established a dialogue with local communities, with municipalities, trying to identify the needs of the community. Our country is quite diverse. Uh, there are some precarious conditions in certain parts of the country. And since 2004 until now, we have delivered more than 90 courses. We have the School of um, nurses, nursing that has played a key role in these projects. We have also have interdisciplinary seminars. That is an initiative that has permeated uh, throughout the university. And that is very good because here, assess the quality of education. We are drafting manuals. We have an international experience. As I said earlier, now we are part of a regional hub, and this will be an excellent learning opportunity. We will learn by doing. We will learn by setting an example, by being in contact with our students and our faculty in order to show that teaching on the field uh, close to reality is much more relevant. So we are looking for achieving committed, uh, caring, service-oriented higher education. What does this mean today? What happens today? Today, we are going through very difficult times of pandemic. The pandemic has uh, brought to the surface the vulnerabilities of our people. We have seen an increase in poverty, in necessities. So universities now are required to stick to their mission to create knowledge and deliver knowledge and put it to the service of the country. In the last few minutes that I have left, let me talk about the contributions of the university system in Chile to the country. This is an integrated university system, not just one single university. Different universities from the public sector, from the church, and in the private sector, all of them have made contributions in several areas in terms of uh, COVID-19 diagnosis and screening, traceability, in terms of the manufacturing of uh, personal protective equipment and the delivery of respirators for people infected, and also the conduct of trials to test uh, vaccines and the development. In all these fields, in all these actions, uh, the university system has been involved in a coordinated manner. And uh, public engaged um, universities, the Catholic universities, have uh, been committed to working in different parts of Chile in the capital city. And of course, we have science and technology, biomedicine as important fields. But we have also been involved with aspects that really move us. And this has to do with 
eh, aportar a las eh, modificaciones curriculares de la educación. Education through contributions to changes in curricula. It also has to do with the ethical behavior during times of pandemic, of society, of the universities in the public system. It also has to do with assessing uh, mental disorders in the population, and it also has to do with employment, precarious conditions, economic support, and something that is very important, uh, support from a spiritual standpoint to the families, especially those that have lost uh, their beloved ones as a result of the pandemic. So as universities, we have been involved in all these areas. Uh, service learning provides us with guidance to work to move forward. And I think that discussions like the ones that we are having these days, this kind of panel help us uh, put in context the role of higher education in our countries, the role of the public sector in our institutions, and how we can orient faculty and education towards service learning to cater to the real needs of the population. Thank you, Judith, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much, Ignacio, for the wonderful contribution that you've given us this afternoon. It's really, really great to listen to what you do as a university linking the public linking the spirituality aspect of it and putting this into two perspectives as commitment and solidarity. This has really brought out the universality of the Catholic institutions when it comes to promotion of integral education, as well as well, well, uplifting the common good aspect of it. We want to thank you very much for the contribution. That is very helpful. And this is really an eye opener in terms of responding to the why question today. Thank you very much. At this point in time, I would like to welcome Mikel Martinez. Uh, he's a leading scholar of education theory and a member of the research group in moral education, the Graham at the University of Barcelona. His teaching and research activity is focused on education and values, ethical learning, citizenship, education and university. He has been a dean of the Faculty of Pedagogy, director of the Institute of Education, Sciences, and vice rector of the University of Barcelona. Welcome, Miguel, and share with us your experience. Thank you, Judith. Thank you, Maria Rosa, Nieves, Universitate. It's a pleasure for me to share this panel with all the other speakers. I'm going to begin my presentation, resuming some of the ideas that Ignacio has mentioned. Basically, because when we talk about these topics of engagement and solidarity and commitment, sometimes it's, it, it seems to us that it's a supplement to what the university does. I mean, the university now is concerned about the culture of science, the culture of quality, of looking for excellence, sometimes even confusing excellence with other things, but searching for it, worried in the best of cases for an improvement of the teaching, but when it assumes a social responsibility and an engagement, it's added as a fourth dimension. And in my opinion, if it's not part of the other three, it will hardly be accomplished. If we turn this issue of social responsibility and engagement in something that is added, then it will be out of this uh, idea of universitate. It has to be at the core of the university. It has to be present there. And so as it's a cross-sectional issue, it's present when we do science, when we do teaching, when the professors work in their departments, when the students share the classrooms. These cross-sectional aspects have difficulties because sometimes it's difficult to systematize them. So one thing is to defend this 
cross-sectional aspect of the engagement and responsibility and solidarity. And another thing is to think that it will be created spontaneously. It has to be designed and planned. And in my opinion, and the University of Barcelona has tried to do this throughout the past few years, it's important to integrate it into the normal dynamics of the university and basically defend with strength that adding engagement and solidarity to the teaching are dimensions that improve the quality of the teaching. I mean, they not only create better citizens, but they contribute to improving the quality of the teaching. Today, a quality teaching is a teaching that is mainly worried about issues as important as, for instance, that the learning that the student obtains should be profound or that it has results that will allow him to reflect critically about reality, that will allow the student to lead collaboration processes, that will allow the student to do research and to contribute solutions to current problems in the world of science, but also in the social world. If higher education is higher, it's because it's higher, not because it's the last step, but because it's the highest, and if it's the highest means that it has to be concerned with the achievement of the values, moral values, as we know, are the most important of all. So this involves solidarity, engagement with the other. All these values should be pursued by the university activity. Certainly, the university has many other obligations, so it cannot focus only on that. But it's important for this to be integrated into the usual dynamics of the university and in the spaces of reflection about the quality of the research and the teaching. It has been mentioned, and it's very important, that the university is a space of living for students and teachers, a space of living where we learn the things we live. I mean, when we learn the values of solidarity and engagement, we don't learn them. We learn them better if they are observed in the teaching environment, spaces of solidarity, spaces that are engaged. And well, both teachers and students are responsible for that. But it's important to understand that this happens within a model of university. And not all universities, I think, are in the best conditions. Or they don't, they're not even interested for a model like the one we are defending here. So we have to understand that this belongs to some universities, those that have the vocation for social engagement, thinking of the common good, contributing to uh, what we say, improving everybody's lives. Perhaps other universities are organized with more, um, with interests more focused on the economic aspects, far from the common good. And, but perhaps they are not in the dynamics that I think we should all be following. Another thing that I think is very important is understanding how within the university, in the usual dynamics of the university, we can help integrate these aspects that can give us this perspective of a solidarity university. One is by integrating the university knowledge better with the more popular or traditional knowledge. I'm thinking of the Sosa Santos here, how knowledge should be more trying to move the borders between the university and the environment. Service learning, etc., goes in that direction, breaking down with those barriers, trying to confront the academic knowledge with the popular knowledge, integrating the popular knowledge within academia. We are not doing that enough at universities, or at least we are not doing it enough. We still have a very <clears throat> academic view with a way of understanding science in a certain way, and we sometimes ignore the contributions from the community. I think that service learning is a clear opportunity of that. And I think that's why it has an important value, because now understanding the world, it's difficult to be done on our own 
If we want to achieve everybody's dignity, or from a biased perspective, as has been that of science in universities in the Western world and only the developed world in the economic terms. Another thing I think is important, the second, is thinking that when we speak of these approaches, it's important to think, when can a university be called a university? Are all universities truly universities? Perhaps some of them are institutions, training institutions, but are they universities? The university as a space for participation, communication, dialogue, participation in the public debate on controversial issues socially and ethically. Does that happen in all these institutions? I don't think all universities are universities, and it's important to identify them because that's the way how the university contributes to society. Because that's its mission. Its mission is to contribute to training future social leaders, the future professional leaders of the business world, of the world of communication, the world of the trade unions, the world of politics. An important part of those social leaders must have started their university studies. So when we have a student in chemistry or medicine, it doesn't have to be a philosophy. In any course, you are forming a professional that has to be engaged with a community, a society, to which he should uh, contribute improvements and better quality. And for that, we need to have a clear mission of engagement, not trying to contribute to covering the deficits. We, whenever we speak of engagement and solidarity, we imagine the that deficit syndrome. No, no, to build an inclusive society where all those that have deficits and not can go together. So this means, as Ignacio mentioned before, the values of engagement, of relationship. And we understand that precisely because of that reason, those universities that look at what they are doing and try to design teaching policies in a certain way can contribute the more to this idea of an engaged university. And there are several ways for that, for instance. I'll be brief. Curricular contents in our courses, those contents may be combined with controversial issues, or we can avoid them. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be a new subject. We have to think of how we can carry the conflicts to the classroom, not only in the world of science and technique, all the conflicts, social and ethical conflicts. That's a way of working from your own course of studies to have a social and ethical approach. It doesn't have to be in a subject on ethics. Perhaps it helps too, but it's important that if somebody is training as an engineer, he should be able to understand that as being trained as an engineer, he's also being trained in ethical issues as an engineer. And service learning helps in that because it combines academic learning and service provision. And that's why we believe so powerfully in service learning. Another thing that is important at the universities is to analyze what kind of relationships are there between students and faculty members. Is that a relation of respect? Or is it an honest uh, relationship, a demanding relationship also, a relationship that can allow us to defend the values of justice, for instance? Are we really equitable when we, when it comes to assessing students? Do we recognize the rights and the duties of the students? This may seem far from the idea of engagement and solidarity, but it generates an environment and a space for living and learning at the university that makes it easier for the person to learn the value of engagement and solidarity. And another important dimension is through precisely involvement with the community and service learning, and I'm not going to reinvent the wheel here, but service learning is one of the teaching and learning strategies that perhaps can help the most to building this formation of the student, of an engaged student. 
when um, provided two or three conditions are met. First, it has to be an academically formal learning according to the curricula of each course of studies. It doesn't, it shouldn't be only a volunteering activity. It has to involve the content of the course because it's a way of creating the identity of a university student so that when he leaves the university, when he completes his professional uh, training, he's also formed as a citizen, and they have to go together. He has to understand that his sense of citizenship is not because he's doing good actions on the weekend, but because it's part of his formation as a professional. And second, it has to be a service that provides a service to the community. So the community has to identify those needs. I, I don't know if this happens to you, but sometimes in our city, we've had a lot of people working in certain sectors of the city and perhaps other areas had more needs. So we need to have a dialogue among the university knowledge, but also with the social needs, and that is vital. With us at the University of Barcelona for many years now, 10 or 15 years, uh, one of the first developments in service learning, Jose Maria Puig and um, those that have followed that path, I've seen my students in class, and I think that when a student goes through these experiences, his level of commitment and solidarity and his way of thinking of himself and his position in the world changes. It's difficult to decide that at university. So our full support to the proposal of this um, engaged formation at university because this basis that the university have to live these values, not because it's declared in the Magna Carta or so in the bylaws of the universities. It's very easy to declare the importance of this, but it's not so easy to propose specific actions to achieve it. And I think that is perhaps something that helps us in these times. It helps us because we have a whole framework of sustainable development goals and sustainability is something that everybody accepts today. It can hardly be rejected, but within that, I think that the university has to try and make some contributions. I mean, teaching policies and for students based on concepts of equality, equity, inclusion, contributing to the debate in, on issues that are important to humankind, such as the importance of pre-elementary education in countries, but that debate at universities gives more strength to that issue. Integrating controversial and ethical issues, uh, promoting contexts of coexistence that are characterized by the values that are typical of a participatory democracy and an active citizenship, and of course, academic proposals like service learning that allow for a wider involvement with society. So I don't want to uh, take more time. I think that is, this initiative of Unicevitati is very interesting, very important, and the, univers the universities that have been following this movement that was started by Nieves and all the people that are around this institution, we are very happy and very satisfied of having meetings like this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miguel. That was really uh, comprehensive indeed uh, to bring to our attention very, very core and key issues that touches the most important aspects of education, uh, equality, equity, inclusion, integration, and redesigning of our curriculum to focus on ethical practices that will therefore bring in knowledge that is compatible and that will also bring in both academic excellence as well as, as, well as the, popular, uh, the popular aspect of our lives. Thank you very much, Miguel, for that. At this time, I would like to welcome uh, Vojana Kulun, uh, who works as an associate professor at the University of Rijeka in Croatia at the Department of Education. She serves as a member of the National Council for Youth Work, appointed by the Croatian government. She's also a member of the European Council for Youth Work. And she's a member of the European Association of Service Learning in Higher Education, 
and has really get, gotten engaged in several EU funded projects, which are basically focusing on service learning development in the EU region. Welcome, Bojana, and let's share today. Thank you, Judith. And um, I want to extend my gratitude to the organizers for inviting me. I want to say hello to my fellow panelists. Uh, I will share a presentation. I decided to have it. So just a second. There. So there are so many um, different discourses, right, that we can take on from this point on what to discuss about the importance of university community engagement in our complex, complex contemporary society. And I decided to use this Picasso's quote um, saying, oh, I'm sorry, just a second, that the world today doesn't make sense, right? So why should I paint pictures that, that do? And I couldn't agree and disagree more at the, at the same time. It's true that our contemporary society is really uh, complex at a certain point doesn't make sense. Uh, there are mounting problems that our planet and our society face each day. There is a fact that within just the next few years, and that is until 2025, the world will have around 300 million students at universities worldwide that we owe to prepare for such a society and, and a planet that we are leaving in their hands. Uh, however, I have decided to use this time that I have on this panel to address some issues that we need to um, examine about what is going on the inside of academia. And in this context, I want to and need to be particularly critical towards something that I call the gamification of academic excellence. And that seems to be actually the light motive of the contemporary academia playing very serious poker game, you know, through rankings, benchmarkings, performing, competing, uh, assessing excellent exercises, um, scoring, um, naming and shaming, and obviously asking the question, right, who is roaring and who is, you know, the king over there. And all of us actually have been playing, you know, this kind of game uh, for a long time. But in its best scenario, this game is focused on matters of fact, while matters of concern remain marginalized. And um, I think that we can all agree on this point that the architecture of concerns and when you want to deal with concerns, you do it in a very different way than the architecture of facts asks you to. And if our universities are divorced, um, you know, from their capacity to really engage in matters of real concern in their communities and incite positive changes uh, in the quality of life, uh, they certainly are and should be, you know, open to the criticism of being socially irrelevant. But I don't think that our universities have, you know, figuratively speaking, run out of the steam. I think that we have to find ways for our universities to be socially active and responsible, would like to call a institutional neighbor. We have to find ways to sustain our university's engagement in those spheres of communities in which we do not buy or sell, but in which we talk with our neighbors about the benefits for our communities, as Barbara put it so nicely. And when you talk to someone, I mean, how can you measure it? to lean on the Picasso's opening saying, um, measuring community engagement doesn't make sense. And yet most of the attempts done so far to capture the benefits of community engagement have been measuring oriented and they have been trying to calculate various aspects of community engagement with endless numerical indicators. But guess what? I think that community, and I argue actually that community engagement is resistant to being measured. And most of those attempts to externally assess community engagement have had a limited success and uptake. So for the start, university is not a homogeneous ideal type institution, right? I mean, it's multifaceted performance cannot be easily steered centrally um, and reduced to a single score. 
or to continue, no university that really strives to be engaged uh, deserves to be externally assessed by the one size fits all approach. Since community engagement is as rich and diverse as the historical and political and social, civic and cultural roots that have been rise to regions, nations and continents and the formation of universities and higher education systems across the globe. And this means that community engagement is always context specific with range of its objectives, activities, outcomes, and stakeholders. And all of them are actually conceptualized differently. They're conceptualized differently internationally. They're conceptualized differently in different academic disciplines and within universities themselves. So measuring is simply not an option. I just don't see it working. And comparing community engagement performance between universities using quantitative benchmarks is unlikely to hold much value. Measuring community engagement in such a way simply leaves behind uncharted, unseen and unheard so many nuanced layers of contributions of all kinds that engaged universities bring to their, to their communities. And while there are universities across the globe, I'm sure that have been already invested years and uh, some of them even decades into institutionalizing their own uh, community engagement, I think we still have to be honest and acknowledge that the pulse of the community engagement on many universities and in many different countries still depends on the enthusiasm of individual academics. And this is particularly the case still for the European higher education. So the question is now here, how to empower universities for such a leap that would actually enable a shift from uh, community engagement being an element of individual academic agency into the one of the institutional agency. And on that crossroad, you know, following that question, um, with a certain group of colleagues, I embarked on the TEFC project and passionately engaged in creating um, a European framework for community engagement in higher education that I want just briefly, you know, present as we do believe in our team that TEFC toolbox has the power to translate that individual academics practices of engagement and their own agency into an institutional narrative on engaged academic um, pillars and universities itself. So to begin with, um, and what makes it different from the previous um, tools and attempts of measuring and capturing university community engagement, the TFC toolbox for community engagement in higher education is an institutional self-reflection framework. Uh, that means that it's, it supports, or at least it's trying, it's trying to support community engagement without using any metrics, without ranking, without benchmarking agenda or bureaucratic self-assessment questionnaires. It provides different set of tools for universities and communities to identify community engagement practices at university and reflect upon their achievement, as well as on the room for further improvement. Um, it is particularly interesting to mention that this toolbox has been developed by um, the international expert team on the TEFSI project, but in an extensive and participatory dialogue and co-creation process involving over 170 participants from eight countries, and it all lasted more than 18 months. In addition, the TFC toolbox is based on an in-depth review of over 200 articles and books on community engagement in higher education. And the final, uh, and, and even on analysis of 10 previous tools for assessing community engagement in higher education. And the final version um, is the result of collecting practices from over 120 practitioners and discussions between 50 experts and representatives of both universities and their non-academic communities during piloting visits at four 
European higher education institutions uh, with uh, diverse institutional profiles. And the TFC toolbox is anchored, as you can see, uh, it's written here in four uh, key principles. So the authenticity of engagement, because we do believe that this policy tool recognizes community engagement that provides community with really meaningful right, role and tangible benefits. The second one uh, is uh, empowerment of individuals because we do believe that this toolbox recognizes different kinds of community engagement effort and, and outcomes. Uh, the third one is focused on the bottom-up approach, right, rather than the top-down steering, because we do believe that this tool is participative, it's based on the experience and stories and individual narratives of engaged academics, rather than on the best practices that usually get, you know, cherry-picked by the, by the management, management team. And the last and not least one, of course, is that we decided to take an approach of promoting learning journey for the universities rather than benchmarking. And this tool actually results in qualitative discovery of good practices across university and on a critical reflection on strengths and areas of you know, further improvement and all of that achieved through collaborative learning participatory uh, process. The toolbox is organized around uh, seven dimensions of uh, community um, engagement, as uh, you can see on this graphic. So it's teaching and learning, research, uh, service and knowledge exchange, students. There are two dimensions of management because the first one is um, focused on university openness and uh, fostering long-term partnership with various sectors in community. And the second one is uh, more policy um, oriented. And uh, there are the seventh um, dimension is supportive, supportive peers. So following the collection of uh, community engagement practices uh, from individual academics, the TEFSA methodology and toolbox actually encourages highly participatory discussion that results in a colored heat map indicating how each of the dimension um, is actually, you know, doing according to the five criteria is illustrated here um, in this graphic, as you can see. Um, of course, there is no time for me to go into more detail. So, you know, for all of you interested in finding uh, more information, I encourage to visit the TFC website and to get in touch with our team. But what I wanted to sort of um, send uh, as a final, final message in relation to um, this new, um, new approach in, in um, capturing the essence of community engagement at universities is that we do really believe after um, this almost two years of you know, passionately working on developing this toolbox that it has a potential to foster a learning journey for universities towards transformational forms of engagement rather than it being a measurement and ranking or benchmarking exercise. And we do believe that um, we need more of such approaches uh, in uh, you know, um, thinking and, and critically reflecting upon uh, university community engagement because we need such approaches that would push the university community engagement from the margins of the higher education missions into the spotlight where it deserves to be. Thank you. I will end up my presentation with this message. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Rojana. That was very, very interesting and quite informative. You know, coming up with different dimensions in which community engagements are done, trying to define it, finding out the measures on even how to justify what we do, and which has been a very big challenge in most of the higher learning institutions is quite interesting. I think it is really very good for us to share. And I guess we shall be able to ensure that the, the key um, uh, principle that you brought up of authenticity, uh, empowerment, uh, embracing the bottom up strategy and learning journey rather than benchmarking will take us a long way. And this basically is the way to go for our institutions. 
Now I will therefore welcome Carol Ma, uh, who is an associate professor at the Singapore University of Social Sciences. And furthermore, she's the head of the gerontology program and a senior fellow in service learning and community engagement at the Center for Experiential Learning. Now, through uh, out the past 15 years, she has acquired an extensive experience as an academic advisor in service learning uh, programs and projects, and of course, research quality. She serves as the head of service learning graduate certificate program at the Singapore University of Social Sciences. Welcome. Karoma, and let's share your experience as well. Judith, yeah, let me share my PowerPoint. Yeah, so when I um, first uh, received the invitations, and I'm so happy that, you know, we can get a chance to talk about why I committed and supportive higher educations today. Yeah, thank you once again for the organizers to invite me and then also join the panelists. Yeah, I'm happy that um, to Singapore right now, uh, to, now it's evening. Yeah, so I'm a say that you know good evening yeah and so uh when i think of this topic immediately i thought of my first conference uh i mean uh related to university of social responsibility organized by uh united nation and also uh so, uh, uh university of Seoul uh in in korea yeah and so that was actually the first international forums on university social responsibility so somehow when i think about the topic, then definitely the role of the higher education, we have to emphasize more on our social responsibility. There are different dimensions, including economic, social, and also environmental. So, uh, you know, there are also different actions that we can focus on, including teaching, research, management, and projections to the society. Yeah, because of this, so uh, I also get a chance to contribute an article about uh, higher education in the world. It is about knowledge, engagement, and higher education, how to contribute to the social change. So this is actually the reason why, again, uh, we are all here is because we hope we can also create social change. Yeah, and then this is also our social uh, responsible uh, university that how we can balance the global with the local. Yeah, and so this actually is a call from Global University Network for Innovation. Yeah, as we all know that the, the whole world nowadays is so complex. Yeah, and then uh, with the pandemic, actually there are a lot of things that we can do also. Yeah, and how we can actually position ourselves in the higher education is very important to think about, you know, whether we can also contribute to human and social development. Yeah, and um, with that, then we, we think of the role of higher education, yeah, including, you know, how we should play a critical role in creating educated and responsible citizens. And this actually leads us to develop partnership and even co-create knowledge and serve, uh, you know, humanity. Yeah, at the end, what we want is to build a sustainable community. That is actually what our previous speakers, they also mentioned about that. Yeah, and then for our role, we have to really think about it's not just service teaching and research. We all understand that as a faculty members in a university, when we you know, go through our appraisal or tenure, then we'll talk about service teaching and also research. I think university to think of how we can create engaged service, engaged teaching and engaged research. So engaged service, including how we can cultivate the keeping culture, promote service leadership, university social responsibility, and even lifelong learning. It doesn't mean that our students graduate from our university, university and then that's it. Yeah, we should be also think about, you know, uh, with the rapid changes of the society, how, you know, how your education can create opportunity for our students and graduates to continue to learn. Yeah, nowadays, you know, many uh, students or many workers, they actually want to learn bite-sized course. So this is also an echo to the changes of the, you know, the society. And then engage teaching. No longer just talking about, you know, classroom setting. Pandemic actually changed our, you know, uh, teaching style. Yeah, and also the new normal uh, make us to think about, you know, how we can teach creatively. Yeah, like today, yeah, we are so happy that we can, you know, link all of us together for Zoom. Yeah, but at the same time, we should also emphasize more on, you know, applied learning, service learning, problem, ser problem solving into pedagogy and also address the needs of the society. 
yeah, engage research. It's not only about, you know, just purely research. We should actually work closely with our community partners and develop community-based partnership or apply research. Yeah, and so the most important part is not only about service teaching and also research. I think we are all here is because we see our young people, our students, they are future pillars that can also contribute to the, you know, uh, betterment of the society. So our students are the most important. However, according to Harry Lewis, the former dean of Harvard College, he actually mentioned about that. University have forgotten that the fundamental purpose of undergraduate education is to turn young people into adults who will take responsibility for society. I think this is actually a very important call for us to think about because we keep talking about we need to have quality education excellent education, then have we think about, you know, whether we can have excellence with a soul, not without a soul. Yeah, that's actually something that, you know, higher education that we can think about. And then this also echo because, you know, I work with a lot of institutions in Asia. Yeah, and so we see education as a character building. Confucius mentioned about, you know, this character building is to learn to be human. Yeah, so again, this is actually quite echo to what Harry, uh, you know, Lewis mentioned about. Yeah, and we should actually mention about not only about ourselves, yeah, but also to the family, community, and the world. Yeah, however, the whole world is, you know, changes, a lot of changes that we cannot, uh, you, know, um, you know, foresee. Yeah, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of complex, you know, we, this, this year we are all attacked by, uh, COVID-19, the pandemic, we don't know what's next, right? Yeah, a lot of changes. So what we actually need to also to equip ourselves to think of what is actually we need in the new education. I'm, I'm sure that everyone knows Jack Ma. Yeah, and then so Jack Ma actually mentioned about that we need the teaching style. If we do not change the travel, the knowledge-based approach of 200 years ago would fail our kids, who would never be able to compete with machines. Children should be taught soft skills, like independent thinking, values, and teamwork. So where can we actually think about and how? So we need our higher education work together, and then um, to create knowledge, co-create knowledge, and engage with the community. Community in terms of not only community that we are serving the non-profit organization but even corporate uh, government yeah and then also our community in general so we need to let our students know how they can understand and explore the knowledge how they can apply for the knowledge and how they can transfer knowledge transfer knowledge is not only institutions transfer knowledge to the community but community can also transfer knowledge to us yeah so that's why you know community-based uh, learning and participatory research is so important because at the end, what we want to do is co-create knowledge. That's knowledge building process. And so I know, you know, this, this uh, conference focus on surface learning. So surface learning actually is a high impact pedagogy. Yeah, if you look at this framework, yeah. And so you see actually, you know, we have academic study here, community surface. We need to have meaningful surface and then research here. So we, we didn't actually take out anything. So we still have teaching, service, and research here. And then throughout the service, we have actually service learning in the middle. Yeah, and then what we do actually, we, create, we actually have knowledge building, knowledge applications, and knowledge transfer. So it's not only one way, we can continue to build the knowledge. And then, then we can build a solid knowledge that can also contribute to the society. But what we need, we need students with good attitude, we need students, they need to have skills like communication skills, leadership skills that they know how to communicate with the community. They need knowledge. If they don't know about the issue in the community, then how would they actually have a common language work with the community partners and values? Values are very important. So we see this, yeah, importance of service learning. Yeah, and I know that we will have more time to talk about it, but I just want to give you why I think it's very important because surface learning actually is a kind of reflection on surface mindfulness and actions. It also can create positive emotion. 
So for us, we always talk about, you know, mental issue, mental health. If you are positive in emotion, then it's also the foundation of your happiness. So when we have positive emotion, we will have positive learning. And then that will also help us to have effective learning. Yeah, at the end, we can also achieve self-actualizations. Yeah, and of course, service learning also link into contextual, uh, contextual learning and then also holistic learning. So if you look at this um, you know, uh, table, you see there are different kinds of learning, right? Yeah, and then I actually circle uh, service learning here. This is actually a study uh, you know, done in the US about how service learning can create deep learning and then contribute to general skills, practical skills, and also personal skills. Yeah, and these are all correlated. Have already got a lot of uh, evidence, uh, research evidence to prove it. Yeah, and we can see service learning is a kind of high impact learning. Yeah, and here actually I want to show this model. Why? It's because, um, you know, when we talk about the role of higher education, yeah, we need to think about the purpose. We need to think about why we need to have different pedagogies to engage with our students and also community. So that actually related to self, others, family, school, community, country, and also global. Remember that I mentioned about when we think of our higher education, it's no longer just local, but also global. But from ourselves to global. Now we always talk about global citizenship, right? But we need to let our students to know about self, others, family, school, and community. So if they don't know about this, how can they go global, right? Yeah, and so like, you know, we all come together again. We have this global panel panelist. Yeah, it's because, you know, uh, we all believe in their master role for, uh, for the higher education and how they can actually train our young people because they are the future pillars. Yeah, and then from this, you can see, again, it's not only one way. We can actually continue to have refashion. So that's why our is here. And then what we need to do, they're also quite, uh, you know, aligned with uh, the previous speakers, including talking about our academic studies, co-curriculum uh, studies, and also community-based service and community-based research. So somehow what we need is to have our teachers to understand about you know, the whole curriculum design. If we actually want to showcase, not only embed the service learning pedagogy and also show the role of university social responsibility. So um, to, to end of my presentation, what I want to call as uh, one of the philosophers, uh, you know, in our China called Sun Zi. And he actually mentioned about, tell me and I forget. Teach me and I remember. Involve me and I learn. And I hope all the teachers, you can involve your students and also involve your community partners. And then uh, we all can learn. Yeah, and at the end, uh, to have a conclusion, yeah, I think we are all here is because we also have heart to serve uh, to the community. It's not just because we are faculty members in the university. Arisonto mentioned about educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. So I hope we all can be educated by our heart. Yeah, so uh, thank you very much. Yeah, and hope we can have more exchange later on. Thank you very much, Carol. That was really good. Very, very impressive indeed. And uh, ideally, very new learning with regards to the reflection, where reflection is now at the heart of everything. As an institution for higher learning or higher education, we need to keep reflecting and having looked at a mode in which we should engage others, engage the service, engage the teaching, engage the research. Research, this is really key. Where I focus therefore as a researcher on action-oriented research. This is the transformation that we need in our higher, uh, higher education institutions. Thank you very much, Carol. Now, at this particular time, I would like to welcome uh, Daniel Stignanyu. Uh, he's a global coordinator of the Scholars Chairs Program, and which brings together a network of 100 states and five universities and 35 observer organizations from all over the world, with a focus on research action or for the solution of social issues. Uh, is a professor of the University of Buenos Aires, 
Buenos Aires and the National University of West Argentina and are consultants for various international and academic bodies. Most welcome, Daniel. Let's share together. Thank you, Judith, for your kind introduction. I would like to begin by thanking Maria Nieves and Maria Rosa for giving me the opportunity to share with you this initiative that is called uh, the Scholars, uh, Cathedras, and the University of Meaning that we um, carry out within the context of the Scholas Ocurrentes uh, framework. I don't know if you can see my uh, presentation here. Yes, we can see it on the screen. For those of you who don't know what my foundation is working on, let me briefly tell you that the Scholars Foundation was created by Pope Francis in 2013, and it is basically focused on youth um, secondary school students uh, and carries out citizenship awareness and meaning in building programs. It resorts to arts, sports, and digital technology in order to be able to work on all these aspects associated with community and social engagement. Um, sorry, I cannot uh, move the slides forward. Perhaps if you click on the arrow to the side, we can see your full screen. Ahí estamos. Bueno, no estoy pudiendo, pero bueno. Podemos hacerlo de esta manera, igual. Well, anyway, I think we can handle it this way. The first question that comes to my mind is to share with you what the uh, scholars uh, uh, program is. Basically, this is a big network that brings together universities outwards and. This has to do with Pope Francis' requirement to um, the church. Um, in the Dictatis Laudio uh, document, uh, Pope Francis said you don't have to be uh, just universities that uh, produce students. So you can have public, private, lay, and religious universities that are engaged with a true cultural revolution that has uh, as a pillar the active listening to of students. So what are these uh, scholars chairs? They are points of reflection and action connected in a network in which students, uh, faculty members, and researchers and society can enrich from a meeting with others. So this is a network between and among universities, but it is also a network that uh, is formed inside the university. Some of the panelists were talking about the need for the research department, for the teaching department, and the extension department coordinate their efforts. It is true, and we all know this, that it is much more difficult uh, to work inside a university, especially if the university is big. It is very difficult to get the different schools and the different departments to work together in a multidisciplinary manner um, instead of working as silos. So who are part of these networks? At present, we have 117 universities from 37 countries from the five continents. Uh, we 
In Oceania, we have the Australian uh, Catholic University. And um, as I said, the Scholars Chairs is a network. So resorting to the universality of gathering, we bring together not only Catholic universities, but uh, may also many public and uh, lay uh, universities. We started the journey in 2016. Nieves Tapia was present at that time uh, on behalf of CLIES. These 117 universities also have 25 non-governmental organizations that serve as observer organizations, and CLIES is one of the key organizations in this um, scheme of work that we have. At that time, uh, at the Vatican, we had the Pontifical Academy of Sciences, and we tried to focus on the meaning that we wanted to focus on service learning, community engagement. And at that time, in that event, we came up with a medium and long-term action plan, and basically focusing on uh, assessment tool for service learning programs in schools. So we connected formal school education with the university. In fact, that was called uh, university and school a wall or a bridge. When this program uh, started to take shape among universities in the form of a network, there were four mainstays that laid the foundations for the work to be done by the scholars' chairs. So first, the university uh, runs the risk of building a wall around itself and not being in contact with what is happening outside. So the outward university is the one that tries to reach out to the community, to the citizens of the country, detects uh, the problems and orients teaching and education involving everyone, especially students, in the providing a solution to those problems. Then we focus also on interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary uh, methods, channels. So we work at the university in different uh, scientific or social areas, but uh, what brings us together is not the fact that all of us are in the same field, that all of us are theologists or engineers or doctors. What brings us together is that we want to change a university through service and engagement. Another characteristic is to promote a culture of gathering. That is why we work with different types of universities from different backgrounds, different religions, and different cultures. This is a basic pillar. We, For any activity, we don't carry out any activity if we cannot secure that heterogeneous participation in all the groups. And the fourth um, principle is uh, network creation, networking. We know that networks need to act. If they don't interact, then networks are just a beautiful name and a beautiful website. So in this case, we want to instill the values of cooperation and collaboration and not competition in the production of knowledge at the university. So as we will see, this is quite different from what we usually see in traditional universities. In the scholars' chairs, we work with young students. We want young students to be part of citizenship uh, programs. Youth 
speak up about their problems and the problems they identify in their communities. Over time, we collected information about those problems. And based on those problems identified by youth, we have put forward to universities that have scholars chairs to orient their teaching and their research to three fronts. First, to educate for uh, supportive humanism, everything that has to do with educational innovation. Then the Laudato Si pillar dealing with ecology, uh, social and environmental sustainability. And the third one, the intercultural, interreligious dialogue for sustainable peace. The fourth pillar, interreligious dialogue. How can we connect this with youth? Um, youth are worried about the different stereotypes uh, that are created around them, the discrimination they suffer, the cyber violence, violence among their peers. So that has uh, led us to uh, focus on research, uh, research line with an emphasis on the production of knowledge uh, connected to actions in the universities where we work. The first concrete action happened in 2016. The university provides expert advice to service learning projects or social responsibility projects. And social responsibility, I include also those projects that do not meet all the criteria to be service learning projects, but anyway, we support them. Universities uh, provide support to those projects and help them expand and be successfully implemented. The research that we do along these lines is also very important, but we also put forward the need to have intercollaboratory work between the faculty members and the different participants in the network. Then we also have specific participation, for instance, in postgraduate programs to work on all the topics that are part of the research agenda of the scholars' chairs. And the fourth one, that is to try to influence on public policy and on the societies where universities are so that the production resulting from youth concerns and from the work of researchers, faculty, and students can have an impact on public policy and generate concrete changes at the local, regional, or national level in a country. Let me also say that if you want to learn in more detail, any of the projects uh, that are being carried out by the universities that are part of the scholars' chairs, we have a scientific journal that is called Cultori del Encontro. Here you have the link, but if you just browse in Google Cultori del Encontro, you will find uh, access to this information. There you will see information of many of the published experiences and more detailed information about the program. Let me also say that for us, a paper cannot just be an opinion, a statistic, or a bar chart or a pie chart with just some numbers uh, collected through a survey. The paper has to refer to a real project that addresses a real need, a real problem of the community, and that has an action research experience, a concrete experience carried out by and among human beings to deal with a social problem. That is the characteristic of our papers, and we try to make sure that our papers differentiate from others in that regard. In July, Pope Francis, in June, sorry, Pope Francis created the University of Meaning. University of Meaning is, but actually, it, I'm saying is, but it's actually in the process of being. 
uh, built, it will start with its activities next year. The University of Minen, as I was saying, is a public, free of charge, global, intergenerational, interreligious, and multicultural university with a former headquarters in the Vatican City, but that is going to operate through smaller uh, headquarters distributed across confessional, uh, public, and private universities in all five continents. We are now in the process of uh, building these micro headquarters that will probably operate within universities that already have the scholars' chairs. But what are the differences between the scholars' chairs and one of these micro headquarters? In the scholars' uh, chairs, we carry out activities relating to teaching, research, field work, action to address all the problems identified by youth. The University of Meaning is not going to have programs. It is a university without programs. But it is a university that is going to conduct education programs for students inside the university, either online or face-to-face -face modality, also considering an exchange of students in order to make sure that they can work together and to implement a university social responsibility or service learning project to go through that experiential um, situation looking at their future life as university professions from a different perspective. That is why we talk about the University of Meaning, to find a meaning for life and for the profession. And the University of Meaning is going to grant credits. It's going to uh, give credits for the curriculum uh, content in each university. If a certain subject or a certain assignment is uh, fulfilled, uh, students will receive credits for that. So these micro headquarters uh, will have to be supported by the rector's office, the president's office of the different universities in order to be able to give credits to the students uh, on those uh, curricular contents that make part of their uh, experiences and also for the exchange of uh, students in universities within the network. So this is the current project uh, uh, resulting from this large network that we built um, through gradual steps. We think that there is much more to do with Nieves and with Maria Rosa we always uh, um, speak about the potential of this network to share with you and with uh, the programs that you are engaged in. So here you have our email address, scholarschairs at scholasocurrentes.org. So I would like to thank you for this opportunity, and I hope you can, that we have the chance to exchange more information. Thank you. Thank you very much, Daniel, for the wonderful uh, presentation that has touched the core issues that if we really need to have the right university that really transforms the lives of the learners for the future, then we need to involve tools that are also promoting active listening and that which therefore reigns within the network and networking. The aspect of collaborative ministry has come up very strongly in the presentation, Daniel. And I really want to uphold the fact that the fact that we don't need to operate as competitors. We need to operate as collaborators. That is the way to go for a universal and integral education in higher education, uh, higher Catholic institutions. Thank you very much for that. And at this point, I would like really to thank all the presenters and all the speakers for the wonderful presentations and very insightful uh, in, uh, uh, input that you brought together. Beautiful reflections that are geared towards involvement, geared towards integral education 
and that which really uphold the true pillars of service learning in our midst. Now, uh, I will give a very brief conclusion just before I call on Maria. Now, one, I will go straight to answer the question with regards to what we've listened to this afternoon. We were talking about why we need a committed and a supportive higher education today. The reasons are, one, it's good for us to note that we have to get rid of that solving or providing solutions to specific problems. Two, why? Because we are living in a world where there are complex and contemporary societal problems that also requires or calls upon reflective measures. We need to reflect. We don't need to react. We need to proact. And proaction here calls us to talk about uh, issues of mission of identity and restructuring the vision of the university. Why is our university in existence? Are we doing the real mission and vision of this higher uh, learning institution? And the complexity of the world today also calls upon relevant key educational principles that will help us in transforming the society. We're involving and engaging all the stakeholders, the student at the center, community at the center, and at the same time, researchers which are action oriented, not just theoretical. Now, authentic engagement stood out very firm from all our presenters, and I guess this could be one of the pillars that we need therefore to embrace uh, in our higher learning institution. Empowering of individuals so that they can be, be uh, that we can have sustainable and long lasting solution to problems is also another pillar that came out very strongly. And I want to agree with the presenters that the bottom up uh, strategy of solving problems that which involves insertion of self and understanding the reality on the ground, doing analysis, social analysis, and economical, whichever analysis, so that you can understand the people and reflecting over them before you provide a solution will help us have a higher, uh, uh, a committed, a supportive higher education that will respond to the concurrent uh, problems that we are currently facing. Then we also saw the aspect of engagement, solidarity, and excellence, which all are geared towards corporate social responsibility. And therefore, the aspect of engaging core universities with the communities is really a pillar. Removing the barriers of what academic excellence provides and linking up with how the community can be engaged and how students can be trained to become responsible adults was also a very good component that came out in our discussion in responding to the question, why a committed and supported supportive higher education today. Now, in conclusion, we realize that there is no one size that fits all approach in community engagement. We need to be flexible. We need to engage. We need to reflect. And we need to be inclusive in all that we undertake. Thank you very much, Ben. I will therefore call upon Maria uh, Rosa to continue with the session. Thank you, Ben. Thank you very, very much, Judith, for a wonderful moderation and the great uh, reflections that you have just shared. Uh, Thank you so much, Judith, for your wonderful reflections and the great moderation you've just uh, done of this panel. We really want to thank you all for having participated in this very diverse and rich panel, so multicultural, that brings us together with a common goal. And as Judith said, these different perspectives is what we are looking for in our program, Unisovitate. So bearing in mind these different aspects to emphasize the identity of each and together define what are those priorities that will allow us to develop a comprehensive education for the uh, big needs that we are having in the current environment, relying that it's possible to build a world that is more solitarious and more united through the commitment and the involvement of our students. So beyond this panel today, we want to invite you as well 
to listen to the voices of the deans and the presidents of the institutions that are the hubs of this um, network, Unisovitate, as you've seen in the previous presentations. We are with uh, representatives from different regions, and you will have access to these presentations through this YouTube channel, or you will also be able to follow them in our webpage, where you will find all the information for our second day of our symposium. Tomorrow, we will focus on the reflections on solidarity and service learning, specifically uh, under the identity and mission of higher education Catholic institutions. We will also listen to the voices of the youth that we know are key in the development of the projects and as future agents for social change. So we invite you to visit our webpage and to subscribe to our social media, particularly the, in the YouTube channel. You will receive the alerts whenever we start the broadcastings of the symposium. And just I'd like to thank you again, each and every one of you, for your relevant contributions that you've brought to this program to continue with this reflection that we want to develop within the framework of Uniservitate, to receive and learn from the voices of each and every one of you and everything you can transmit from the institutions you represent and the regions you represent. So thank you so much again. And we will keep enjoying and sharing this first global symposium of Uniservitate. Thank you. I would like to send a greeting from the Pontifical University of Chile to this great service learning meeting where we are here to work together at a Latin American level in order to highlight this contribution from university to society. Our university is 132 years old. It's strongly oriented towards a quality education for our youth and also to the creation of new knowledge and its transfer to society. We are deeply engaged with the development of the community, with this link with society, and with um, over 32,000 students, over 3,200 teachers, research areas in all the, the areas of knowledge, and we are contributing to the development of Chile and also to the development of our region. We have strong international connections with universities in Latin America, with universities all over the world through university networks and the possibility of developing this project together on service learning. This is extremely important for us. For us, the pandemic that has affected the whole world and our country as well has highlighted the university of the importance of universities in the generation of knowledge to society. And that's why we've worked strongly in our country to deliver from research and its transfer different contributions in medical supplies, the development of vaccines, clinical trials, uh, the management of data that is so important in a pandemic, healthcare supplies, ventilators, and also different documents that allow us to move forward in knowledge in areas as important as school education, employment and economic grants and subsidies, and also ethical guidelines, spiritual support, and others. And I say this because the pandemic has implied that universities 
are more involved in social engagement and come out of their barriers and their limits and frontiers in order to make a contribution to the country. In this sense, service learning actually shows two aspects and combines two aspects that are very important for our institution, how to educate our youth in the best way possible from the disciplinary aspect, also from values, uh, globally so that they can perform in a changing world and how to put community service and the reality of the territories and of the communities within that learning so that the youth from very early in their university studies can be trained and formed in a very close relationship with that society to face the challenges that are faced in health, in education, in community territories, challenges that are also present in engineering, in law, in all the areas of knowledge. And in that sense, at our university, for many years now, we've uh, had a very important growth and development of service learning. Today, we have over 130 courses that are connected to that methodology, and they're being permanently assessed and evaluated. And most importantly, we are making progress and incorporating new areas with new contents, new methodologies. Within this area of service learning, it is especially relevant, the role that Catholic universities play in our country, in our region, and particularly our university, where we embody and we own this call from Ex Corte Ecclesia to be very alert to community services so that the universities that are born at the heart of the church um, are involved in community service and uh, in the reality of the people we serve. Because universities, and particularly Catholic universities, have a duty of quality education, a duty of creating knowledge with quality, and these two pillars have to be projected towards the community. And what better way of doing that than through service learning that puts the best capabilities of the university through teaching and research in contact very directly with the territories and the communities. And therefore, I wish you a wonderful symposium and count on our support and proposals from the Pontifical University of Chile. We will be working very hard in projects that tend to develop service learning in our Latin America. Thank you so much. Mabuhay to our dear friends from Centro Latinoamericano de Aprendizaje y Servicio Solitario and fellow members of Uni Servitate. It is my pleasure to be part of this global symposium on service learning in Catholic higher education. Our founder, St. John Baptist de la Salle and his companions, discern God's call to respond to the human and spiritual distress of poor and abandoned children during his time. As a concrete commitment to this divine call, they, together and by association, established schools that made quality human and Christian education accessible to young persons. Today, De La Salle University is part of that global network of institutions that continues that mission and ministry. One of our key strategies is what we call service learning. Service learning is an integral part of our commitment to community engagement together with teaching and research Service learning allows our key stakeholders, namely our students, faculty members, and partner communities, to deepen their appreciation of concepts and practices of sustainable development through practical applications, person-to-person -person connections, 
and collaborative initiatives. Through service learning, our students and faculty members partner with communities in creating solutions to some of the most pressing challenges in our society while engaging in academic work that focuses on their personal and professional growth. Our service learning initiatives are also responsive to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and require a lot of passion and commitment from our individual members and our institution. We are also honored for the opportunity to be chosen as the regional hub for Asia and Oceania of the Uniservitate program. This is a daunting task, especially in this time of the global pandemic. But through God's grace and our collective efforts, we will be able to pursue our shared mission to develop and promote service learning in the region. We look forward to expanding our global partnerships, enhancing our capacities, and most importantly, helping uplift the lives of the poor and the marginalized within the perspective of Christian ideals and values. Thank you, and we look forward to a meaningful and productive symposium. It's an honor and a pleasure to participate as a guest speaker in this symposium of the Uniservitate program, Service Learning in Catholic Higher Education. I'm Jose Maria Aguilar. I'm the president of the Deusto University of the Society of Jesus in San Sebastián, in the Basque Country, in Bilbao, in Spain. We are an institution designated as a regional hub for Uniservitate, the program for the promotion of service learning in the region that is called Southern Western Europe, which is an honor for us. At Deusto, service learning was introduced in 2001. It was one of the schools that introduced it almost 20 years ago, and since then it has expanded throughout the centers. There were already service learning activities or USR activities um, at the university, but service learning was a step forward in this social dimension that is integrated at the core of the educational project. And since then, many initiatives and courses have been designed based on this pedagogical approach. Through research and communication that has let us think and learn. We consider this as a tool that integrates experience, reflection, learning, and action and assessment. This is in line with our, our pedagogical um, solution methodology. That is, service learning is very proper to materialize the Ignatian methodology that looks for the integrated development of the person. We use the expression service learning. Learning. Kleis uses uh, the word solidarity also for uh, the expression. In English, they use service learning, different names in different countries. In this project, Uniservitate, our role is to help a university in Portugal, Spain, so that they institutionalize the methodology of service learning. Institutionalize means that it shouldn't be an individual option for only one teacher, but rather to be present in the curricula, to be recognized, to be part of the strategic plan of the university, to have a place in the promotion and incentive programs for teachers, and this implies internal changes at the university. We're willing to assist others in the development of service learning. We know that when you are a teacher, a professor, you realize you, you learn a lot when you teach. When you explain, that's when you learn more, much more. Well, the same applies to university. When you assist another university, you learn also as a university 
this experience of guiding others helps us learn as a university on service learning, because if you want to help another university, you will improve your own diagnostics, how you are, how you want to move forward, etc. So it's, uh, we are proud for having been chosen as experts to guide others. And we are proud of this learning path. The axis of the project is to help for the next uh, three years two Catholic universities in this part of the world to make progress in the institutionalization of service learning. This will require research, training, interviews, even changes within the university. To summarize, why is Deusto part of Unisoritare for two reasons. First, for helping universities, our vocation is to help as, as much as we can. And second, because this helps us deepen and improve our service learning. Thank you so much for your attention. Welcome and greetings from the Association of Catholic Colleges and Universities. My name is Father Dennis Holtschneider and I serve as its president. ACCU represents near 200 Catholic colleges and universities in the United States and about two dozen international members, several located north of us in Canada. As an association, we serve as the collective voice of Catholic higher education in the United States to the media, the government, and the church. Through our programs, our services, our consultations, we help to strengthen the Catholic identity and the mission of our member institutions. And so ACCU is humbled to serve now as the regional hub for North America for the Unis Servitate program. We believe that service learning is a vital aspect for the ways in which our colleges and universities live out their faith. We know that participation in service learning helps to strengthen our students' understanding of serving other people, those often on the margins of society and in need of compassion and care. This was the work of Jesus Christ, and now it's our work. Unis Servitate is an important program because it reminds all of Catholic higher education that our faith in action matters. While each region of the world, every different culture and distinct charisms bring a unique strength and approach to how service learning is conducted at any one campus, the universal practice of institutionalizing service learning at our institutions is an important goal for all of Catholic higher education. And Unis Servitate seeks to accomplish this ambitious goal. And we're honored to have a role with the program. ACCU has been tasked with building a research plan to compile and to systematize our region's research and best practices in the spiritual dimension of service learning, the institutionalization models and processes among our member institutions, and the impact of service learning programs on students, on institutions, and on communities. In order to accomplish this, we have created an advisory board comprised of service learning practitioners and scholars from diverse institutions across the United States and Canada. All are experts in their field, and we're grateful to be working with each of them, some of whom will be participating in this conference over the next two days. So thank you to Clays, to Porticus for leading the Unis Servitate program and for making this conference possible. We're looking forward to our participation, and we thank you for the honor of this invitation. God bless you. Dames en heren, de opdracht van deze universiteit en bij uit. The university has a comprehensive remit. We hebben een traditie om. It is often expressed in terms of missions. Whereby teaching and research are crucial aspects, but not the only ones. Naast onderzoek en onderwijs wordt in toenemende mate en bevatten dat in de derde missie. The third mission stipulates that the university must contribute to sustainable social development. Duurzame maatschappelijke ontwikkeling en in 
In Flanders, this mission is more or less officially translated as public service, a label that is not immediately inspiring and that downplays the importance of this mission. It goes much further than service. It is about our firm engagement to help shape our society. And it goes there evident om het werken aan een for KU Leuven, the firm mission means that drawing on our teaching and research and rooted in our Christian inspiration, we work towards humane and sustainable development and a harmonious and just society. We safeguard the values of democracy and the rule of law. We respond to the needs of vulnerable groups, contribute to cultural development, and alert policy makers to the risks inherent in the major challenges facing people and society in North and South, East and West. Our mission statement provides the relevant frame of reference in this regard. It defines KU Leuven as a space for open, creative and forward-thinking debate. It regards academic education based on scientific research as its core task. It underlines the importance of interdisciplinarity and reminds us of our obligation to strive for excellence in everything we do. And it also anchors what we do in a Christian human and world view, which demands specific consideration for the most vulnerable. KU Leuven Engage is also taking more and more shape in the study curricula. For example, with a now well-developed service learning, learning through social engagement and deepening this experience through reflection. Over the past five years, KU Leuven has developed a wealth of service learning pathways. I can cite the Synology students who devote a full year in China working for migrant children and women's rights and who come into contact with Chinese culture in the most far-reaching way possible. Look at the history students who, through their contact with refugees and the privileged children or homeless people, learn to place complex social problems in their historical and current perspective and give them a voice. KU Leuven Engage is only partly a story about impact and social innovation. It is first and foremost a lever for the broader teaching of our students to become critical and responsible global citizens with central values such as diversity, sustainability and solidarity. More than ever, we are giving substance to what makes the university a university, the place where engagement translates into targeted action by the university community that shapes it in all its domains. this program, particularly because it resonates a lot with the purpose, the theme, the purpose, the life of Tangaza University College. Tangaza University College is an institution brought together by 22 uh, religious congregations of the Catholic Church who came together with uh, the intent of forming religious uh, leaders, clergy in, in the church. We started as a seminary training priests, though we have expanded to include other social transformative causes uh, in the society, including education, including management and leadership, um, ministry of youth, uh, social transformation, um, business enterprise development, and all those kind of causes that transform society. It is our intent 
to develop leaders, transformative leaders in the church, in the private sector, in the government and the wider society. Leaders that will make a difference, leaders that are cognizant of the challenges societies are facing today. It is because of that we embrace the service learning pedagogy, an approach which is embedded in our strategy, where we believe in building academic excellence, building research excellence, and building community engagement. Besides that, being a Catholic institution, we are keen on developing the three with a Catholic identity. Organization excellence helps us to put together all this into fusion. The service learning pedagogy comes in as a tool of developing leaders, understanding that their progress in academics and research is not sufficient unless it solves society's problem, hence the community engagement pillar. We believe in engaging with the society so that the society can learn from us. And also we run and work together with that society to solve present and future problems of our society. It is for this reason that we are happy to be a hub hosting the service learning agenda of the church within the region. We are excited to have you and we hope that you're going to find this symposium fruitful for yourself. Thank you very much and welcome to Tangaza University College.